So I'm Sarah, Sarah Simmons, and I'm a printmaker. Um, um, I'm a screen printer, um, that's my specialism. So, but fine art printmaker, so I print on paper. Um, I'm from Kent originally, like the middle of Kent, um, and my family are, are creative. Um, we're, so I'm from a working class family, and my background is working class, like through all my ancestry really. Uh, they're all from South London, um, and they're like dockers, or um, you know, they're all worked in manual labour. If I go back a little bit further in my my mum's side of the family, there is like sign 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 writers, sign painting. So. Um, there is a little bit more of the creative side as well. Um, but yeah, my parents moved to Kent um, just when I was born, actually, from London. They moved out of London. And uh, me and my sister grew up in just like a estate, sort of two up, two down house. Um, and yeah, um, my mum works in the NHS and she um, worked as a carer before that and did like many jobs, like silver service waitressing, caring for people, all the jobs, she had all the jobs. And my dad was an engineer. So I'm not from like a typical... Back, creative background in, in that respect but my dad's a really good photographer and my mum they're not together anymore but um, my mum is very creative very visually creative um, you know she used to paint our rooms with all wacky you know wild things like changing rooms I don't know if you ever saw the show changing rooms she kind of got a bit obsessed with that and would sponge effect uh, <laughs> lots of our surfaces it was kind of bad taste if you look at it now but yeah my mum is dyslexic so um, I'm from, yeah, a family, like my sister's dyslexic, I'm dyslexic and my mum's dyslexic. So um, having like learning difficulties as a child meant that um, for something I probably hated when I was a kid, it meant that, you know, my strengths were, um, were the arts and were the creative field. So, um, and my mum was incredibly, both my parents were incredibly supportive, but because my mum was dyslexic um, and she didn't find out until later on in life that she was dyslexic, um, she really knew that um, she wanted to make us feel confident in what we what we were strong at and good at and not focus on maybe what what were our weaker subjects so um, mine was art so she pushed me into art and she would always be behind me and support me um, yeah she was incredibly supportive d down to the fact that she'd sometimes pose for me so I could like n nude so I could like life draw her so she did like lots of things she went above and beyond I think um, the, the motherly support so yeah I had a lot of support for, uh, from that being my strength and I guess just straight away from school it was my strength so um, I like drama and the, the arts in general um, but but yeah but I guess I like drawing and painting and sculpting that was probably something I liked the most. My the early years in like primary school um, I think because I was dyslexic I got put into like the special needs group um, and which was I always hated absolutely hated and I think Hopefully, I'd like to hope it's advanced since then. I'm 38 now, so when you know, I really hope there's been progress. But I think when I was um, diagnosed as being dyslexic, I think Kent was the last county to actually acknowledge it as a as a disability. So they just sort of lumped all the kids with learning difficulties together and to play snakes and ladders. I feel like I just played a lot of board games, and so I feel like I missed out on quite a lot of education, like in my primary school, because they just put us together and so. The, I guess it meant that, that the things that I did really like, I did really like drama and I did really like storytelling, but I wasn't ever, I was, I was removed from those classes because it was English. They thought that I struggled with those. So, um, so I did a lot more of the, the, the arts, basically, the arts and crafts. And so I think that when I went to secondary school, I had some good teachers um, in the art department, in the art tech building, and they really sort of channeled my creativity and, you know, it helped encourage um, and nurture that. They were really good in, in the art department and they pushed me on to then go on to do my um, A-levels in art. So I studied like higher education and did my GCSEs in, in art and textiles and things like this. So I chose all the creative subjects and, and yeah, that was definitely where my interest lies. Um, and my dad's photography, I think he sort of pushed me with the camera quite early on because um, he had a little dark room in our garage, sort of a makeshift DIY dark room. So I knew about that quite early on as well. So yeah. I guess after you know school education I went into higher education so I did go and do a degree in art and then I did a master's in art as well so I did my foundation in Kent in Kayad then I went to um, Brighton and did my BA in fine art printmaking and I think I didn't really know much about printmaking at that point point. Um, I just knew I was good at art and I thought that would be painting just because maybe my my world was quite narrow and I just thought art was painting and sculpture and photography and I didn't really know much about the print um, um, processes. So when I went to my interview in Brighton, 
they said that they thought that my work that I brought along was much more suited for the printmaking class, even though there wasn't much print in it, um, the aesthetics might have been more suited. So I had an interview for the printmaking department and I went and started my three year fine art printmaking degree in Brighton. So it was probably that decision that, that pushed me into print because I didn't, before I would have gone into a painting class. Um, so at the beginning I didn't really enjoy it straight away. I was a bit like, I've, I've applied for painting. So I was like, I want to be a painter. So I think I probably was a bit shocked because yeah, I always thought I was maybe painting or photography and it wasn't really, a print, print wasn't the avenue or the medium that I was going to go down. So I remember being a bit like, mm, do they know me? Do they know, you know, do they, like, they just lump me in there because there wasn't enough space? I don't know, you question all these sorts of things. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm happy with the decision because I'm happy with their, following their lead on that because I did, I went into the print room and I fell in love with all of the machinery and the equipment and the process. Um, I guess maybe that early insight with my dad in the dark room, the DIY dark room in the garage, might have been, you know, there it was full scale and we had like, you know, the lithography, the etching presses, the relief presses, the screen printing, so there's all the different mediums. And just even going into the paper room, like the smells, I think all those sorts of things, I was like, they were very romantic to me and I was sold, I think, so yeah, when I went into the print department and I stayed and I completed the three-year degree and I got first, so I obviously did really like it, so I just put my head down and was like, right, okay, this is for me, yeah. And then I, um, <laughs> I had it in my head that I was going to move to Berlin, so I moved to Berlin. So I, um, I saved up enough money in the summer holidays and worked, and this was in 2007, so it's a little while ago now, um, so living was much cheaper um, and I had my bike because cycling is a big part of my life I like cycling too um, I had my bike I had my old desktop laptop desktop computer like because I had loan difficulties that you were able to be eligible to get a free computer to help assist you um, and so I got a free like one of the early um, Macs as a G5 um, which uh, like I carried on the Eurolines bus, I carried my desktop, my backpack, which I was moving to Berlin with, and my bike, and I put them all under the bus. The Eurolines coach from Victoria and I went to Berlin, um, and I had very little money, and I lived very cheaply. For about eight months, um, I stayed. I, I went and worked in, not, it was un, unpaid, and it wasn't, wasn't a residency programme, but they have a studio there called BBK, which is in Kreuzberg, um, and it's still going now. It's artist studios for international artists to come, and I made work there, and so I, I did a lot of collagraph printing at that stage. I wasn't necessarily in screen printing into it as much. I, I did a lot of collagraph. So I'd cut plates out of cardboard, shellac and varnish them up and then ink them. And then I'd run them um, through the etching press. And I had an amazing time because it's Berlin and it was 2007 and it was great. So, um, but I did live in a hostel for a while because I didn't speak German or know anyone. So it was, uh, it was yeah, it was an interesting time. I felt like I developed as a person more as well being there. But, um, and I love the studios there, the, the, etching, the etching room and the different workshops were incredible. Um, I remember there was, she has passed away now, but there was a lady called Valeska who was the t print technician and she used to like chain smoke just in the print rooms next to like acid bars and things. And it was like, oh my God. Um, and yeah, so it was just, it was a different world. It felt like a different world. And every lunchtime, all the artists from all over the world who'd come to use the studio, um, would sit down and have lunch together. And it was such a nice thing. I think you paid like five euros and you'd have a meal that someone, one person would take turns to cook and then a coffee and a glass of wine and you sat down and that was a really nice way of like structuring your day and then you'd go back to work afterwards in the studio so um, I had a really good time there. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of like hustle in my life, a lot of, yeah you're right, determined is the, is the answer, like I didn't speak German, I didn't have any money really like um, and I still made it work and as long as I could and, and I, I did, I think I had quite a lot of nights where I was pretty emotional because I was like, I don't know anyone here, what am I doing? But I think the art was the reason why I was there and I was totally, um, you know, I was swept away by the city. And I, with a lot of the prints that I made, I used to go out through the night and plaster them on the billboards. So I, I printed onto newsprinter then and just, I wanted to disseminate them around the city. And they were very abstract, just black and white prints or just black prints onto, onto sort of light newsprint. And I just used to plaster them up at the night time with a few of my friends and, leave them around. So I've got some pictures of them, um, but I guess most of the art I made, I just sort of gave away in that, and gave to the city or whatever, whoever, whatever approach you want to take, maybe, um, maybe I littered the city, I don't know. <laughs> but then I wanted to go on to do a master's, so I knew I would return. Um, so I did return uh, to the UK to apply for my master's at the Royal College of Art, and that's when, um, yeah, I was accepted, and then that was my next higher education.
So before Go Studio, which is where we are now, um, I run something called Portable Print Studio. So I was living in London at the time and I had finished my master's. And so I, um, yeah, London's not a cheap place to live. So, and I didn't, couldn't afford a studio space um, that was big enough to house and I didn't have all this equipment at that stage. So I made purpose-built tables. Um, my partner Frank actually made most of them so I could carry them around and um, to different venues and different um, institutions, galleries, museums, and I could teach workshops that way. Um, I had it portable, so I had a little yellow van and, and I lobbed everything in the back of the yellow van and I would run around and teach workshops that way. So Portable Print Studio was how I set up and then, um, then when I eventually moved from London and I wanted and I eventually found all the equipment that you can see around us now, um, bit by bit I bought it second hand from people who might have been selling it along. So um, yeah, and then finally now it has a base here in Babisham which is great, yeah. So I guess Goose Studio is um, it's a working a workshop where I've got my screen print equipment, um, I've got risograph facilities as well, and um, so it's mainly about duplication where I work large scale on the, the, the big bed here, the A0 bed that I've got, and I've got my beds behind us here um, where I print A3. So I teach workshops, so I'll teach beginners, um, intermediate workshops or advanced workshops, people who've never done screen printing before. Uh, or who just need a little bit of a refresher. Um, one or two day workshops, and then I print for artists. So um, aside from making my own work, I print um, editions for artists. So just last week I was printing for James Lee Duffy, doing um, a three color print of his in edition of 100. So I work with clients um, that come in, they'll show me the artwork and they want to make it into an edition, um, but maybe they don't, they've never screen printed before. Um, artists that might be painters who want to sell prints as well, I will be able to provide that service. So I do that in screen printing and I will soon be doing that in, in the risograph. So I also will teach risograph workshops too. And risograph is quite similar to screen printing, the process which um, I'm sure people do understand or might know a little bit about. Um, it's working with a stencil, a stencil based process and you print one colour, one layer at a time. And the risograph is the same in screen printing basically. You work with a sort of a screen or a silk screen, which it used to be called, um, it's now synthetic. In, in risograph we would work with a master. So um, we physically insert drums into a printer and it prints very similar to, similar way to screen printing in a way. One colour, one layer at a time. But you're just restricted to sort of A3 scale. Um, whereas obviously on my larger bed I can print A0 is the maximum I can go, so it's a little bit bigger. But yeah, it's mainly a paper studio, so obviously screen printing a lot of people know could be fabric printing, um, t-shirts or you know, jumpers and hoodies and things like that might have like a printed design on. That's not the avenue that I sort of go down, I, I'm much more paper, I work a lot with paper. I can print onto fabric but I prefer paper, so yeah. Um, but yeah, with Portable Print Studio I uh, did lots of um, community engagement workshops so I would, um, I, I would work for bigger clients, maybe I'd work for bigger companies like Nike or something or Gap and then with the leftover inks that I had from those workshops that client might buy um, for that brief, for that project I was doing for them, I'd have all this leftover surplus inks. So for those I'd then give free workshops in the local communities. Um, so I was living in South London, so I would do them in South London um, and they could be community groups, you know, um, I worked with elderly, young, young groups, um, adults with learning difficulties. And so I really liked giving back with my, um, with my process because I could charge higher clients prices and they'd pay for the next workshop and then I could give it back for free, which was quite a nice thing to do. And I feel like not just that it was a nice thing to do, it, it, it fed my soul, it makes me feel good. Um, and that's where I enjoy my job more when I do those sorts of things. So I think I look forward to this future for Goose Studio to be able to give back again to Faversham in, in, in that way and the surrounding areas. Cause I did that a lot before in London. And since I've been here, I'm just sort of settling in, getting myself um, set up here, finding my feet, obviously making sure that I can survive and live off of this space as well, because I have my studio rent to pay out. So I just want to be able to um, and earn enough so that I can you know, just live comfortably and then think about in the future how I can expand my space and invite in community groups and, and share, their, share this process with them, especially people who might um, ordinarily want to do maybe art or might not necessarily think, a lot of people think that they're not good at art, but um, I'd love to bring those people or people who don't have access to it um, would, be, would be really great, who wouldn't normally um, have, have access to these facilities because I forget that I, do, I am lucky that I have all this equipment here um, and, it's, and I don't want to just be in here like, whoa, me and all the equipment. I want to share it. So I think 
for the future collaborations probably definitely where I will will focus on whether it be my surrounding area or whether I think about collaborations with studios across the world I like the idea of that um, I, have, I know lots of studios now from various institutions that I've studied in and um, we've all spread in, around the world so I'd love to be able to do like a collaboration with other studios like an exchange program um, and I think that having artists come to you know to, to, to artists coming from abroad to come to Faversham and then make work in the studio and then for local people to see that 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 a process that person coming creating um, will be beneficial for everyone so I think my plan for the studio would be to expand um, you know maybe take over a little bit more space like on the left <laughs> so like spread out a bit more I feel like because obviously the machinery and everything takes up a lot of space so I would like to expand the studio uh, for it to be bigger and I'd like to have like an artist residency so I would have like twice a year artists that would come and stay for a couple of months at a time and they would make work use these facilities and we'd exhibit the work that was made in Faversham. Mm -hmm.